everyone, welcome back. Today I want to do a review on the LEGO Star Wars Slave 1. This is a UCS set and it is awesome. Um, yeah, so this is the box right here. Um, the box is very big. Um, and it is recommended for ages 14 and up. And um, the set number is 75060. And of course it is called the Slave 1. And it almost has 2,000 pieces. 1,996 and I'm really surprised that Lego didn't just put four more pieces in just to make it 2,000 um because that just seemed like something they would do so I'm kind of surprised about that but um that that is not 2,000 um yeah there's not really much else to the box so yeah let's see the actual build okay this is the actual ship in landing mode and uh, right now, just you can just see that it's really detailed and it's really big. Um, and it's actually almost bigger than uh, my little table that I put all of my Legos on. So uh, if you know some of my other other videos, then uh, you can see like this is actually like really big. Um, but let's just start off with the minifigures. All right, one of the minifigures that is included with this set is Han Solo and Carbonite. And um, this isn't new, this is the same one that we got in the Carbonite Freezing Chambers set. So, uh, not really much about, not really much about him. Um, same details and stuff. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing really. It's definitely a lot better than the old one, but um, still the same one that we got in the Carbonite Freezing Chamber set. And if you don't know that set, um, I'll put um, the link to that video that I made of the Carbonite Freezing Chamber set in the description. So um, basically, this is actually all raised, that the Han Solo is actually raised, and it's not just like made to look 3D. And there's these little handles on the top and bottom that you can put minifigs on. And then on the side, there's just these um, little buttons. Those are also raised. Um, and it's, it's really detailed, but um, uh, yeah, not really. Uh, much else to them. This is just a little sneak peek. Oh, sneak peek. I was going to show you this with the Han Solo minifigure, but you can actually put the Han Solo inside of this, and I'll show you once um, I show you the Han Solo minifigure. So there's these little pig pegs that um, he can go on. Um, yeah, that's it for the Han Solo and Carbonite minifigure. Okay, this is the Han Solo minifigure, and um, not really much detail, like really like no detail. And again, this is the same one that um, came in the freezing chamber set. Um, he has nothing on his back, nothing on his arms, nothing on his legs. Um, a little bit of like um, a little bit sh of shirt on his chest, but like not really much. And he does have an alternative face. Um, so that's like his carbonite face. And then you turn it around, that's like his normal face. And he has his Han Solo hair. Um, yeah, not really much to him, but, um, like I said, if you take your Han Solo and Carbonite minifigure, you can actually put him right in the back in here, and just clip him in like that, and he stays in there, and, uh, yeah, it, it like, his head sticks out a little bit, but pretty much it lays flat, so, um, it's not like, it's not like it's hovering off of the ground that much, so that's nice. Um, yeah. Now let's move on to the Bespin Guard. Okay, this is the Bespin Guard. Um, this is basically the same exact one that we got in the um, 2016, I think, uh, Advent Calendar. Um, so there's not really much about him. Again, he has a little bit of print on his back. His front, he has like a, I don't know, tuxedo thing for Star Wars. And, um, and it's basically the same exact one that we got in the advent calendar, except his face is a tiny bit different. He doesn't have an alternate face. And, uh, yeah, he has his little hat on, and he, um, just has a little pistol. The one that Han Solo would normally get, but actually in the set, Han Solo, um, like, doesn't have a pistol. So I thought that was a little weird. Um, uh, yeah, not really much to the Bespin Guard. Same exact one, basically. Um, yeah, now let's move on to the Stormtrooper. Oh my gosh, why did they even put a Stormtrooper in this set? I don't even know. Alright, well basically, um, yeah, a Stormtrooper does come in this set, and I think that's a little weird because, like, uh, like, it's the Slave 1, and they could have put any other minifigure, and they picked a Stormtrooper, and it's, like, a minor part about it. So, I don't even know why they put him in there. 
And for a UCS set, comes with only like four and a half minifigures. Um, and they put a Stormtrooper in. I don't even really get that. Um, but like, okay. It's basically the same exact Stormtrooper that we get in every single set. And uh, he has the angry clone face, his helmet, um, his normal Stormtrooper pistol thing. And uh, yeah, that's about all. He has uh, his printing on the back and on the legs, nothing on the arms. Uh, yeah, that's it for the Stormtrooper. Okay, and of course, since it is the slave one, they had to include a Boba Fett. And, um, this is a different one than they got in the, than we got in the Carbonite Freezing Chamber set. Um, it's just a tiny bit different. Um, it's more detailed, like the arms actually have details on them, and it's a different weapon. Um, um, I personally like this one better. It looks like, it looks better with him, but the other one looked more realistic to the movie. So, um, I like both of them, but yeah, he has printing on the arms, um, on his chest and his, um, legs, and on his other arm he does, but his, like, side cape thing is covering it up. I don't even know why they put that there. Like, with Captain Phasma and, like, the troop transport set, they put that there, too. Like, I don't even really get it. Um, but, okay. Um, then his helmet, um, you can take off his, um, helmet, a little bit of a different face. Um, his antenna thing. And uh, then he has his jetpack, um, but actually there is printing underneath the jetpack. I don't really know why they put printing on the back if it was just going to be covered up with the jetpack. So I'm not really sure where they did that, but um, right here you can kind of see the, pr the printing on the back once you take off the jetpack. Not really much, but um, I don't know. I, I just still don't really know why they did that because they could have just left it plane and I would have been fine with it because like the jetpack is covering it up um uh yeah that's that's about all you can see a couple little details on him like he has like a thermal detonator thing on his chest um yeah that's all for the minifigures now we're going to go on to the actual set okay this is the actual sleeve one and it's in landing mode and um there's two modes there's landing mode and then there's the um, flying mode with the stand. Um, and I'll show you the flying mode later. But um, first I'll show you um, what we can in landing mode. Um, mainly just if you look at this, it looks like really good from just every single angle. And you can see at the bottom here, it's actually like studs on the bottom. So it's not, uh, uh, it's not um, like studs facing down. So I think that was really nice. And, uh, and you can kind of just see like a lot of detail in this. It, like they definitely just put a lot of work into it. Um, uh, so just like you can see everywhere, it's just like has different details. It's it's not symmetrical, which I actually like about it. Um, that it's a little different on each side. So that's pretty cool. Like right here, there's like those flat pieces, and then on the other side of that part, there's um, the um, like grills. So that's pretty cool. And everything is just like, it's slanted, it looks really nice. And you can kind of see here that it's just at a little bit of a slant. And everything kind of just matches up, and I just, I really like it. It, it just works really good for this set. Um, and right here, you might have seen that these guns, they can actually rotate, so that's pretty cool. And what I thought was a little weird is you can actually like point them down at the ship and like <laughs> shoot the own ship, I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna say this, that none of the, um, none of the shooting, like, none of these guns or anything, uh, on this set actually shoot, so all the ones I'll be showing, none of them shoot, like, studs or are the spring-loaded ones, so that was a little sad. Um, but this is just, like, really detailed, that's, like, what I mainly love about it, it's so cool. And, um, then at the bottom, there's this actual, like, there's this, the cargo compartment is down here, and it looks really nice. Um, so you can get a good view of that. Um, you can actually lift out this door, just like that. And, um, it exposes the cargo compartment area. And you can't really see much in there, um, because there's not really much in there. But you can take your, uh, Han Solo and Carbonite minifigure. And, so, right here. And, um, it does work with the Han Solo in the back. And these little clips on the side right here. You, um, you just put it in like that, and then just put it in the clip, and now it's clipped in there, and then you can close it up, and now he's actually in there, and he, 
like you can open up the door and he's just on the door so that's really cool and I really like that and um, if you do like get him lost in there then actually I'll show you when it's in landing I mean flying mode there's actually a door in the bottom of the ship that you can get him out so that's really cool and uh, you can kind of see a little bit right now these studs there's two of them and they're just clear and they're just there so it looks like it's kind of hovering a little and um, I really like that effect it looks really cool so um, that was pretty nice and you can just see so many details um, but I think that's about all I can show you when it's in landing mode so now you can see it in flying mode okay this is slave one in flying mode and you can see it on its stand and you can see in the back the um, the stand is actually like in the ship now and it holds it up really good. So starting off with the back here, they actually put a lot of details into the engine and stuff even though half of the time when it's in landing mode you don't see it. So I'm happy that they put all this detail into the engine. And when I was talking about that door that if you get like the Han Solo in it, um, then you can just open this up and then if you just shake it around then he'll actually fall out in there. And um, that's really cool. And you can see the engines and stuff and those studs I was talking about. And um, yeah, it just looks really nice from the bottom too, so I'm glad they did that. And these wings are actually gravity assisted. So wherever you turn it, they actually turn with it. So that's really cool. I really like that about it. So if you like turn it like that, they'll always stay flat to the ground like that. Um, so that's really cool. I love that about it. And um, right now you can, um, you can just see the whole thing and it just looks really nice in flying mode, I think. Um, and starting off um, with the canopy up front. So let's get a closer look at the canopy up front. Okay, so right here you can see a closer look at this big um, shield thing. And this is actually exclusive to the set, this big, um, this big clear piece. And right here are actually stickers, so th that's not printed into it. Um, and you can actually take this off. So you can just go, whoop, and take that off just like that. And uh, you can see the insides, and um, it looks really nice from the inside. And like, there's not much like um, like upside down studs or anything showing. So you can you can see inside of there, and there's actually this like chair. And you can see he has a bunch of control panels. And um, this one and this one right here, those are actually um, those are stickers. But um, then the ones on the side, like. Um, like the one right here and the one, uh, see on the, right there, those are actually um, printed. And those are like older pieces, like the ones, like that one is just the one with like the targeting grid. And that's, that's like from the Millennium Falcon. And that's really cool, so that they added those old printed pieces in. And this piece up at the front is also printed. And this chair can like move in all sorts of direction, directions. So that's really cool. And he has a nice comfy headrest that can move to who, his desired position. And you probably just saw that right there, that um, he actually included is an extra gun. So that's really cool. And they fall off all the time. And there's these little clips on the side. And um, whenever you put the canopy on, you always hit them by accident and they always fall off. So um, there is these clips right here that you can store his guns in and included is two, so that's pretty cool. And they just always fall off, which is really annoying. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's about it for the canopy. So now let's move on to the secret guns. Okay, so right now, you probably can't see the secret guns because they're secret. Um, they're not really that secretive because um, actually on the side, there's kind of big holes right there. Um, but um, right here, you can actually take that out and there's actually like little missile launchers and uh, like I said earlier like uh, they, they don't shoot or anything they're just for looks and um, they just slide in on some droid arms and uh, they can just slide in and they look really cool because they like blend in and then on the other side um, it's actually a little bit different and this one is really hard to get out because there's like this missile right here this big missile and it kind of gets caught so if you have it in like a weird position, like right now, like you can't close it. So you have to like bend it and then fold the droid arms back and then put it in. Um, so that's pretty cool. 
And um, down at the stand, which I'll show you in just a second, um, it says what type of guns those are and stuff. So um, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, let's move down to the stand. Okay, so right now you can see the, um, the stand, and this stand is really nice. And included is um, this big sticker that usually comes with most US, UCS sets um, that basically says stuff about it. So right now, if you want to pause it, you can, um, you can read that. I'm not going to read it right now because I don't want to waste time. But um, yeah, you can see it says all the different weapons. It says the manufacturer, the length, the engines, the hyperdrive system, the maximum speed, the weapons, and the capacity. And um, this stand is built really nice. It has a bunch of Technic pieces. So um, it's like really sturdy. And these little things up at the top, um, there's these little notches in the back of the Slave 1 and they just fit into the notches. Um, so that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, not really much to the stand, just um, some things holding it up. It's really sturdy, like you can drop it and it won't break, except this piece might fall off, but the actual Technic pieces won't break. Um, so yeah, that's pretty nice about the stand. And this stand is really nice. And yeah, let's get one last look at the Slave 1 in flying position before the video ends. Okay, here's one last look at the Slave 1 with all the minifigures on it. <laughs> um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, let's see if we can hit 10 likes. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Make sure to leave a like and maybe subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time.